So this is me just uh, cooking up my uh, egg steaks and chicken sausages now. Look at that, almost cooked. So that's 126 grams, so 130 grams of protein there. So I've got over three meals. And then the back you can see I've got some of the muscle foods, uh, chicken breasts that I'll uh, fillet, flatten out, butt fly, and I'll cook those off. And I've just got that. I've literally got just one pack of rice there, that's 150 grams of uncooked weight in there, so 75 grams per serving I have, and all my meat will go in the other box and I'll split them over two meals. So this is uh, another one of my meals, as you can see here. Oh, let's get you on that. That's just four eggs and some of these little egg and banana pancakes I've done. So it's just a, a little snack before I go to bed. So you can hear the weights, you can see the weights, you can smell the iron, and you can taste the iron, and on all the, you know, the senses were involved, Eddie taught you that. And I, everything you did on film and off film, I'm still your student, and it's an honor to be your student, sir. I just want you to know. Sometimes you're a student, and sometimes you're a teacher, forever. I'll say that again. Sometimes you're a student, and sometimes you're a teacher forever. We've all been teachers. And when I'm around Eddie, I'm still learning. And he still tells me things. And he still demonstrates how to do things. You know, and his, his courage you know, has translated to us over the years. And, and when I started squatting 15, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever it was, I didn't count, my training partner counted. But I thought about you. And I thought about how he continued no matter what. And, there's a special thing that happens when you, when you can only do 10, 15 reps and somehow you conjure up 15 more reps. I mean, it's like magic. It's like the world is yours. And, uh, you know, there's a special power that you realize that you have when you go to failure in the set. You, you, it's, a, it's a destructive or creative destruction. You get real creative. And I'm looking forward now to the next Mr. Olympia who doesn't copy Dorian. I mean, Dorian changed the way we think about bodybuilding to the extent to where it's getting a little bit too far right now, we believe. All due respect, Ronnie Coleman, uh, Kai Green, uh, Phil Heath, with all due respect to the monsters of the industry, but they're looking at the, at the Transformers as, as an idolized goal, if you will, uh, or the Incredible Hulk. I think they're looking to be Transformers on stage. It's inhuman what they've created. It's, it's awesome. It's unbelievable, but I think we're looking for the next guy on stage to create something new and different. Uh, Dorian walked on stage and he had a non-routine routine. He did something nobody else ever did before. And I remember him copying my hair shot and dyeing his hair blonde. He was sort of sweating at all the British championships I was guest posing at. He was at my seminar many years. I could see him in the back eating, very shy guy. Didn't say much. When he walked on the Olympia stage, and I was long retired by then, I saw him and oh my God, somebody has done something the world has never seen before, and we have applauded that, and he's from your own neighborhood, he's from where we just came from, Birmingham, England, and, and he did something that's never been done before in the history of our sport, and my God, it puts tears in your eyes to see that, you know? By the way, <laughs> Dorian did. He said hello. Thank you, thank you. Please text Dorian and tell him we said hi. <laughs> we hadn't had no Facebook back in the old days, did we? We had no inter and we had no texting ability. But again, I think what's going to happen, we're going to see a guy walk on stage that maybe revisits uh, Robbie Robinson or Brian Buchanan uh, or then has the stage presence of Ed Corny. I mean, we're going to see that again. Everything repeats itself. Okay, and again, Kai Green and Phil Heath, these guys are unbelievable. And they, they are, they, we owe them our respect and, and our admiration. And, they, and they, they went the distance and they've accomplished things never been done before. But I think we were all into hot rods in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. Now, bodybuilding is turned into funny cars. We appreciate the funny cars as an analogy. You get my, my analogy? We're looking at Ronnie, we're looking at, I see Ronnie, we're looking at uh, uh, Phil Heath and Kai Green as being funny cars. 
and we want to get back to the hop rods. And I think the classic physique, even though the shorts are kind of, you know, they hide their legs, they're getting shorter and shorter, I think the classic physiques may bring back, you know, you know the, the real art of the sport. I mean, it's supposed to be a sport and an art. And that's what Samir was talking about. It is and should be a sport and an art, not to mention a science. And I think a lot of the modern day guys are so into the science, they forgot about the art. And they, you know, they're into the sport, but there's an art to it. And there's a love to it. And ver posing is non-verbal communication. You have to talk to the audience without your words. And when we saw Ed do that for the first time, I mean, even Arnold, Arnold was like, his jaw dropped and his eyes got big. We all said, that's what I want to do. When I, and I said that. I said, that's what I have to do. I have to do the squats and I have to do what he did on stage somehow. And I didn't have the gift and the genetics of Samir Banut or Ed Corny. I was just some skinny some kid, from, some white kid from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania who had no genetics. But my legs, of course, I had the right muscle attachment sites. I didn't come out of the room with cross striations. Um, but they responded to what Eddie did, and uh, that became my trademark. And uh, you know, I can remember when I won uh, the universe finally in Alpupo, as Samir was leading up to. Uh, Joe Gold said to me prior to going to the universe, eventually you're going to have to pay for a membership. And I'm like, okay, Joe, you're right. I should pay for a membership. After I came back from Alpupo and won the universe, Joe sat me down in his office. Joe Gold and said to Arnold and said to Frank Zane and said to Ken Waller and said to Tony Nowak, Tom is a member of our club. He will never pay for anything, any membership, any clothing, anything Tom needs. He's one of us. And I was just, oh, I was thrilled. I was barely a teenager. And I was inducted into the group of individuals that was like, oh, you know, I, I could dream to be in that circle, in that inner group. Uh, <clears throat> to this day, I, I still have trouble talking about it. It was wonderful. And, and still is. And Joe Gold accepted me, and, and the guys accepted me, and Frank Zane and Arnold sat me down. And they said, we think you should market your legs more than anything else, because none of us have legs like you. And I'm thinking, really? You think I should? I didn't know. I was, I was a teenager for crying out loud. And so I realized with Zane's guidance, and, and a guy named Cal Scalic, a lot of you probably forgot about, he was there too, Cal Scalic. And he came down, he said, now that you're Mr. of Universe, you have to charge this much. Bring your girlfriend with you. They should pay your expenses as well, you know. And uh, they gave me the guidance. But we had no Facebook or texting back then. We had to wait three or four months till the magazines came out. So nobody knew I won the universe in '78 until four months later. And I had a job. Here I was handing out beach towels on the beach, and I just got out of college, you know. I had two degrees, and I'm like, I'm gonna have to get a job. I was all ready to start teaching at, at a Catholic school and be the science teacher, the phys ed teacher, and realize, okay. You know, my little bodybuilding trip was fun, and it was enjoyable, and it was meaningful, but it's time to get a real-life job. Uh, well, I, Zane was so convicted and assured me so much that my time would come. I waited for three months, and, you know, and I, they, he, they taught me how to answer the phone. And this is Tom Platt speaking. How are you, sir? And my fee is, I need half the fee in advance and half upon arrival. They taught me these things, Aaron. I, I, di I didn't know how to, how to conduct business, but when finally the phone rang, and uh, you know they would like you to guest post at the Mr. and Miss Colorado. Would like you to guest post then at the Mr. Michigan. Would like you to guest post, you know, here and then pretty in Europe. I said to Bill Reynolds, who was the editor of Muscle and Fitness, I want to go to Europe. I've never been to Europe. And of course, Julian Blomart in Belgium, Albert Busick, Busick in, in Germany. We started, you know, traveling, and then it was Paul Graham in Australia, and in England it was Ron Davies. Ron Davies. You guys don't remember Ron Davies, but he had the, the tie bar, the custom-made suit. He taught me how to dress. He taught me about fine wines and about scotch and what I was supposed to, I was supposed to drink. He taught me about cigars, and I learned a lot and, you know, on, on the road. Not that those are important things, but these are things that I wanted to tell you about, mainly because we should talk tonight about what you can't Google. What you can't Google. I mean, what you can see on YouTube and what you can Google, you can do that anytime. But tonight, I think we should talk about things you haven't heard about. And we, I urge you to make this your seminar and ask us questions about things that you don't know about. We'll share it with you. We promise it. Thank you.